guys, so this week we are at Grand Design. This has been a long, long needed uh, journey for us out here to Indiana. It's probably the only thing we really had solidly planned this year and we had to bring the American Dream back to the mothership to get some work done. A lot of small stuff, nothing big. Uh, on the way in, we had to reroute ourselves a little bit and get here a little sooner because we had an axle issue, uh, Dexter axle. The men and women there took care of us within a week. We had a brand new axle on our trailer. We're rolling again. We're gonna talk about you know the last few weeks and talk about, you know, this experience of getting servicing done here at the manufacturer. This is something cool. Um, because of the times and because of our route plan, that's just happened to work out. And we're excited to, you know, get things fixed finally. So we made it here to Indiana a few weeks ago, a little, uh, little bit sooner than we had planned. And the reason being is because we found an issue on our RV when we're in South Dakota. Now we hung out in South Dakota for what, a week or two? Yeah. Did Custer State Park, we did Mount Rushmore. If you haven't seen our video, go check that out. Um, but during all that, we discovered that we had a axle issue on our door side rear axle and we are completely within all our weights. So yeah, uh, another thing that we noticed on our way here was our, um, our tongue jack stopped working so we couldn't actually get the RV off of the truck. Luckily um, we were hitched up for the night because we had rain coming and or bad weather coming mm -hmm. the following day so we we had a campground reservation at a COE for three days and we just stayed for one night, but and the, the next morning it was pain to get the, the blocks off because I just left it on the truck and put some blocks to relieve some pressure. Yeah, it was a long day. It was supposed to be like a five hour drive and it turned into like a 10 hour drive because we had to uh, find a camping world along the way and have them uh, change out our camping world, camping world, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It was like a NASCAR pit stop. <laughs> we called them on the way in. They had the tongue jack ready. They mm -hmm. went in and paid. We're out of there. Yeah, it was uh, awesome. And it's actually the smallest camping world, I believe, is what they said. Mm -hmm. But they have everything, so it worked out. And yeah. But while we were there at Camping World, we noticed between Rapid City and Sioux Falls, that inside tire was just, it was done. It was yeah. already like getting down to cord. So we stopped at a discount tire, had right that tire, had that tire changed out. And then we went to our next campground on our way here to Indiana. and. That was a fun stay. <laughs> Somebody, uh, so we're not Midwesterners. We never lived here, grew up here, <laughs> anything like that. And um, apparently they like to have, uh, they have a warning system mm -hmm. and they like to use that warning system at random times. For different things, different purposes. And it was this a, is what we learned. It was a stormy day mm -hmm. and uh, they did their tornado warning system and it, okay, the, the siren. Let's just back the story up. So we're sitting there, it's, it's close to noon or so. We've been working all morning on our computers and all of a sudden, you know, again, it's, it's rainy, it's windy outside. We're by ourselves in this campground. When we called to make the reservations, so no one's there at the campground either, except for us and one other family. Mm -hmm. And the lady says, oh, there's a tornado shelter, uh, you know, right by your site. And we were like, well, well why would okay. you say that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're not used to that, you know? Yeah. So anyways, we're sitting there, we're typing away on our computers and all of a sudden through the, the airways, we just hear this blaring siren. And so I freak out. I automatically assume there's a tornado that's gonna come right towards our RV. So I'm screaming at the kids, get your shoes on, get your shoes on. And you know, I open the door, I tuck and roll, I do the whole thing, you know, and we run over to the storm shelter and Corey's still sitting in the trailer. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> It was a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, she was completely freaking out. And I'm just looking at my phone going, why am I not getting a warning? Like, <laughs> I feel like, you know, I have all these weather apps and stuff. I'm not getting a warning. Something is off here. The dog's like three counties <laughs> over, you know, she's limping on her own over there and stuff. Yeah. And Jody's yelling at the dog and I'm still getting my stuff like my wallet and, you know, stuff that you kind of need. No, I was, I very much thought our lives were in immediate danger. So, uh, you know, I was a good mom and I grabbed the kids and we just... Uh, I wish I <laughs> we booked it. I need to just keep a camera going at all times. That, it was it was okay. funny after, but it was kind of still a little bit scary because yeah. like we're in this you know new area of the country and eastern Nebraska. <laughs> we've never been there, and but we saw all of a sudden shortly after all these cars showed up and there's like this little building coming out of the ground. Yeah, it looked like a storm shelter. And and people people were just going and we're like. Whoa, is that a, like yeah. the community storm shelter? What, if you've ever experienced anything like that, put it in the comments below. But yeah. like, we were just like. Let so, us know we're not the only West Coasters. As we continue to head east, let us know if there's anything else that we should be aware of out here on the road. Because nobody... 
So yeah, we're here at Grand Design, and I will tell you, uh, we had the whole weekend here. We just enjoyed the kids. Uh, it's Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. We had a little fire. We smoked up some ribs, met some people. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of Grand Design owners came through here, which it's pretty cool to see other Grand... You know, I don't know what it is about Grand Design owners, but like even in a campground, it's like we have to talk. It's like yeah. right when someone pulls in, it's like, yeah, we're going to talk later, and it, and it happens at some point. Yeah. We also did a harvest host, which if you don't know what a harvest host is, we'll put a link down below, but we get... Uh, they have museums, wineries, and uh, breweries, fruit, all that stuff. Yeah. And so we're Harvest Host members. We love that membership. And we had a night to kill, so we went and did the RV Hall of Fame. The RV Hall of Fame was just awesome to see how this industry has evolved over the time. And it's uh, a lot of vintage trailers, a lot of cool stuff to see. It yeah, was... they had really cool um, like RVs and trailers from like the 1930s and stuff. So w when you get to walk through and just see the progression of you know how. RVs have evolved through the years makes you really appreciate what, what you have now <laughs> yeah we were we were kind of joking around like could you imagine taking the family across country and like some of those like yeah. early 1930s 40s oh you yeah know, like, some of them had like straight up wooden benches to sit on you know just like bolted to the floorboards <laughs> hold on kids yeah. going down a grade <laughs> yeah, it was really fun though it was a really cool place and um, it was cool to take the kids and let them kind of see what you know how it's evolved too because I think it makes them appreciate what they have too you know oh absolutely and it's it's uh they have they have so many different sections to it and it was like 30 bucks for the whole family so mm -hmm. that was pretty affordable and we spent a good couple hours in there just enjoying it the kids enjoyed it which they just wanted to go in every single one that <laughs> they could and you know it was like we'd make you know they'd make comments like oh, I don't like this bunk or this and that so <laughs> Yeah, it was fun. They definitely appreciated it. And, you know, another cool thing is they they had like this model display in there that showed how these things, like the assembly lines work. Mm -hmm. And now we're here at Grand Design and Brantley's like seeing the walls and he's seeing the frames and he's putting it putting oh, yeah. it together pretty good. Yeah. So, yep. but yeah, so yeah, we're, we're enjoying ourselves here. Uh, tomorrow morning, it's gonna be an early one. So we had the whole weekend here by ourselves, and about four o'clock this morning, it like the cavalry came in it here. It was 3.40 this morning, <laughs> <laughs> to be specific. And so it like woke us up. We didn't know what was going on outside, but that's when all the workers come in here and this place came alive. And I probably sat there for about, had a couple cups of coffee and just watched just all the moving pieces and it's crazy like this is america it's right like here like thousands of people just pour in to go to work you know in this and there's so many different uh what do you call them uh buildings and yeah I don't, we have plants, no we have, yeah we have no clue what's going on inside them because the, um there's not factory tours right now so we'll definitely have to come back when they do have one but it's just non-stop workers i mean there's just trailers moving left or, i mean everywhere there's tractors there's you, you name it out here it's just moving all the time and, and, and it's like a coordinated mm -hmm. coordinated chaos kind of thing is what it kind of looks like to me mm -hmm. you know it almost reminds me of being on the flight deck it's just <laughs> i mean things are just going and yeah. So yeah, this has been a huge maintenance stop for us. Um, tomorrow morning, we got to get up early. We're going to share how this goes at Grand Design, and you know, just share the overall experience. We have a whole list of stuff, a lot of small stuff, a yeah. couple big things. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, tomorrow morning we'll see you there. And bright and early. It's going to be 6 bright. Six a.m. Six a.m. We have to be <laughs> in the office. Slides in. Yep. Stabs ready, up. Ready to rock and roll. And we got to find something to do for the day because we have our dog with us. So that makes a whole nother challenge. So. And then after that, uh, well, we'll see. But we'll see you in the morning. So it's early this morning and we're getting the trailer ready. Uh, I'm gonna go inside to the customer service here in a minute and talk with Grand Design. Um, we're gonna go over our work order and figure out the plan of the day. And from there, Jody and I and the kids and the dog are gonna go find something to do. Um, hopefully everything can get hopefully everything can get taken care of in one day. We don't know, but it's a beautiful morning sunrise. Look at that. Look at those colors. How cool is that? So it's early, but as you can see, this place comes alive. Uh, I think around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, it, it, everything's rolling. So it's pretty cool to see. Um, 
but yeah so yeah i'm gonna go in talk to them and see how this uh how this day goes